Eliminativism, sometimes called eliminative materialism, is a philosophical theory that holds that certain common-sense psychological concepts, such as belief, desire, and intention, do not refer to real, genuine entities or processes. Eliminativists argue that these concepts are either false altogether or else that they are useful but misleading fictions. In other words, folk psychology is a false theory of the mind. They think that we should eliminate these so-called common-sense concepts from our scientific and philosophical vocabulary and replace it with a new theory that is based entirely upon physical science. Eliminativism is considered a radical form of physicalism, the view that the physical world is the only world that exists, and is a controversial theory. However, it has been defended by a number of prominent philosophers. In this video, we will explore the different forms of eliminativism, its relationship with other philosophical theories, the arguments for and against it and the implications of eliminativism for our understanding of the mind. We will begin with a look into the two forms of eliminativism. The first form of eliminativism concerns propositional attitudes. This is the view that beliefs, desires, and other propositional attitudes do not exist, that they are not real entities or processes. They hold that these concepts are either false or useless in both science and philosophy. For example, Paul Churchland has argued that beliefs are a remnant of our pre-scientific understanding of the mind. He further argues that when we say that someone believes that something is true, all we are really saying is that they are in a certain neural state. He contends that we can explain human behavior without using the concept of belief. In fact, he argues that the evidence suggests that beliefs are not representations of anything at all. Patricia Churchland has said that desires are not mental states at all, but rather are bodily states. She argues that we can explain human motivation without using concepts like desire or beliefs. For example, we can explain why people are afraid of snakes by saying that they have an innate fear of snakes. We do not need to use the folk psychological concept of belief to explain why people are afraid of snakes. The second form of eliminativism rejects folk psychology as a whole. They think that such common sense psychological concepts are based on false assumptions about the nature of the mind and, therefore, are incapable of explaining human behavior. For example, Daniel Dennett has argued that folk psychology is a Cartesian theater theory of the mind. He asserts that folk psychology assumes that there is a central place in the mind where our beliefs and desires are processed. Dennett further argues that this assumption is false, that there is no such central place in the mind. In addition to these two main types of eliminativism, there are a number of other offshoots to it. Some philosophers have argued that emotions do not exist, but rather are nothing more than neural bodily states. Other philosophers have argued that qualia, or subjective experiences, do not exist. Some philosophers have even argued that consciousness does not exist. Now, let's consider the relationship between eliminativism and other philosophical theories. Eliminativism is considered a form of physicalism. This is the view that the physical world is the only world that exists. Functionalism is the view that the identity of a mental state is determined by its function, or its causal role in cognitive processes. Eliminativists often reject functionalism, arguing that mental states are not functional entities. The identity theory is the view that mental states are identical to physical states. Eliminativists reject the identity theory, arguing that mental states do not exist, only physical states. Eliminativism is often motivated by the findings of cognitive science. Eliminativists argue that the findings of cognitive science show that folk psychology is a false theory of the mind. Supervenience theory is the view that mental states supervene on physical states, meaning that any change in mental states must be accompanied by a change in physical states. Eliminativists often argue that supervenience theory is a necessary but not sufficient condition for the existence of mental states. Reductionism is the view that all sciences can be reduced to physics. Eliminativists who reject folk psychology as a whole tend to also be reductionists. I also wanted to mention that eliminativists often argue that the development of artificial intelligence is incompatible with folk psychology. They argue that if we can create machines that can behave intelligently without having beliefs or desires, then this will show that beliefs and desires are not necessary for intelligent behavior. We can now consider the arguments for and against eliminativism, starting with those in favor of it. 
Eliminativists offer a variety of arguments in support of their view. Eliminativists argue that scientific progress is making folk psychology increasingly untenable. For example, the development of neuroscience has shown that the brain is a much more complex and dynamic organ than we previously thought. This suggests that folk psychology, which is based on a very simplistic view of the brain, is unlikely to be accurate. Along the same lines, they make the argument that folk psychology is simply false. Eliminativists point out that folk psychology is based on a number of outdated and inaccurate assumptions about the mind. For example, folk psychology assumes that the mind is a modular system, composed of separate components such as beliefs, desires, and intentions. However, they will point out that there is no scientific evidence to support this view. Another common argument for eliminativism is that folk psychology is unnecessary for explaining human behavior. Eliminativists argue that human behavior can be adequately explained by physical and neurological factors, without the need to invoke mental states. For example, eliminativists argue that our beliefs are simply the products of our brains, and that our desires and intentions are simply physical states that cause us to behave in certain ways. Eliminativists argue that folk psychology has failed to provide a successful account of a wide range of cognitive phenomena, such as mental disorders, consciousness, and free will. This suggests that folk psychology is not a reliable guide to the mind. Eliminativists further contend that folk psychology is theoretically inadequate because it is based on a number of false assumptions, such as the assumption that beliefs are mental representations of the world. This suggests that folk psychology should be rejected in favor of a new theory of the mind that is based on more accurate assumptions. Now, let's consider the arguments of the opposing side. Some philosophers have argued that eliminativism is inconsistent with our ordinary language and practices. Basically, we cannot make sense of some of these things if we eliminate folk psychological concepts. For example, we use folk psychological concepts all the time in our everyday lives. We say things like I believe that the earth is round and I desire a cup of coffee. It seems strange to say that these statements are meaningless or that the concepts they refer to do not exist. Other philosophers have argued that eliminativism is incompatible with our moral intuitions and responsibilities. For example, we have moral intuitions that suggest that people can be held responsible for their actions and that they deserve praise or blame for their actions. It seems odd to say that we can hold people morally responsible for things that do not exist. These moral intuitions seem to be incompatible with eliminativism. Another opposing argument is that the scientific evidence does not support eliminativism. Some have concluded that there is evidence to suggest that beliefs are mental representations of the world. For example, we can study the neural correlates of belief using brain imaging techniques. Another argument is that folk psychology is a successful theory of the mind. Folk psychology is able to explain a wide range of human behavior, including our beliefs, desires, and emotions. It seems strange to say that a successful theory of the mind is false. There is also the argument from the difficulty of developing a new theory of the mind. It is not clear what we would replace folk psychology with if we eliminate it. Finally, let's consider the implications of eliminativism for our understanding of the mind. First, it implies that we cannot explain human behavior using folk psychology alone, if at all. Folk psychology has been a useful tool for predicting and explaining human behavior in everyday situations for quite some time. However, eliminativists argue that folk psychology is not sufficient for explaining all aspects of human behavior. For example, folk psychology cannot explain why people make mistakes, or why they have irrational beliefs. Second, it means that we cannot attribute mental states to people in the same way that we currently do. For example, we cannot say that someone believes that the earth is round or that someone desires a favorite food. Perhaps, even more troubling, it means that we cannot hold people responsible for acting on their beliefs and desires. If these things do not exist, then people cannot be held morally responsible for them. Folk psychology assumes that we have control over our beliefs and desires. 
However, eliminativists argue that this assumption is false. They argue that our beliefs and desires are caused by a number of factors that are beyond our control. If eliminativists are correct, then it seems that we cannot hold people morally responsible for acting upon their beliefs and desires. In addition to these general implications, eliminativism also has a number of implications for psychology. Eliminativists argue that psychologists should focus on studying the physical and neural processes that underlie behavior instead of current methods like therapy and counseling. Eliminativism is a controversial theory, perhaps even a radical position, but it is a serious philosophical position that has been defended by a number of prominent philosophers. It is a position that challenges our most basic assumptions about the mind and it has a number of important implications for our understanding of human behavior. Even if eliminativism is not completely true, it can still be a useful corrective to our current understanding of the mind. It can also help us determine if we need to develop updated theories of the mind. Thanks for watching. Please give us a like if you enjoyed this video and feel free to comment to let us know your thoughts on it. Also, check out our other study review videos on other philosophers and philosophies.